If you listen to Golden Hour and try to play it on the piano, you'll realize that you can't because it's not in a key that exists on the piano. Some guy in the 1930s decided that we were going to tune all of our music to this thing called 440 hertz. And that's a problem because there's only actually 12 keys in 440 hertz. But if we step outside of 440 hertz, there's an infinite number of keys and each key evokes a different emotion. And so what about all these other missing emotions? Up front, absolutely no shade to Jake. I think Golden Hour is a beautiful and very well written song. However, there are certain things he's saying in this clip that are, um, how might you say? Not quite right. It's true. Most Western music today is tuned to A440, which means that A above middle C vibrates at a frequency of 440 cycles per second. However, it wasn't just some guy in the 1930s that decided this. It was more like a chain of consequences fueled by the industrialization of the modern world. It's fairly complex, but this is the most brief, concise, while still being accurate summary that I can give. A440 wasn't always the standard that it is today. In the 1830s, this guy, Johann Heinrich Schiebler, traveled around Europe to measure different orchestras tuning and pitch anchors. His findings varied radically from place to place. This wouldn't matter that much at the time as musicians wouldn't travel as quickly or as often as they could a hundred years later. Instrument builders also just weren't focused on a global scale quite yet, so tolerances surrounding standardized pitch anchors weren't chiefly considered in the manufacturing process. Most of the time as a musician or an orchestra, you were left to tune to the largest, most immovable instrument in your town, the organ. I know one of you is responsible for this. And from town to town, different organs' pitch anchors varied drastically, sometimes by a deviation as large as a third against modern standards. The need for standardization arose when advances in locomotion and travel made it so that musicians could more easily collaborate cross-culturally. And while all this was happening, a war was brewing in Europe. And no, not whatever one you were thinking of. No, I'm talking about the great European tuning war. Do you think you're out of tune? By the way, no one actually calls it that. It's kind of one of those historical events that's so niche that it doesn't have a clickbait title assigned to it. So just roll with me for a second. The idea was that the higher you pushed your pitch standard, the more exciting the music would be. To that end, orchestras in France, Vienna, and Germany would try and one-up each other by pushing that standard higher and higher and higher. Most instruments could handle this, but our poor opera singers, not so much. So the French capped it at A435, where it stayed for a long time. However, in 1910, the American Federation of Musicians set A440 as the standard benchmark, largely because of this guy. J.C. Deegan. You may recognize his name from certain vintage percussion instruments. Deegan was a wildly popular manufacturer out of Chicago at the turn of the century. And he was actually a proponent of the French standard of A435. But he argued that when it was set at A435, it was done so at a temperature of 59 degrees Fahrenheit and was too low for the steam heated concert halls of the time. A lot of concert halls as far back as 1883 set temperature to be kept at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Deegan argued that wind instruments tuned to A435 at 59 degrees Fahrenheit will raise to a pitch of A440 at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, I feel it is my duty to mention that as a manufacturer whose bottom line is directly affected by tuning standardization, Deegan's lobbying attempts were almost assuredly not so noble. In any case, the American Federation of Musicians stuck with A440 as a standard. Other countries started to follow suit. The British independently came to the same conclusion, however, with a different rationale. They argued, in my opinion, quite prophetically, that A440 would be ideal because it can be easily factored, which is important because it can be easily electronically synthesized, which would be highly relevant for the musicians of the future that, in their estimation, would tend towards electronic instruments. In 1955, the International Organization of Standards recommended A440 as a standard pitch anchor, which was formalized as ISO 16. Now, to Jake's credit, I, I know you, you can't say all that in a soundbite interview. Totally get it. I'm going to give him a pass. However, I, I, I just can't give him a pass on this. There's only actually 12 keys in 440 hertz. But if we step outside of 440 hertz, there's an infinite number of keys. A440 is just a pitch anchor. Western harmony and the 12 notes that he mentions are a floating system to which we apply a pitch anchor to. If I play golden hour in A440, I am firmly rooted 
in standard theory. But guess what? If I play golden hour in A432, I'm still firmly rooted in standard theory. Changing our pitch anchor does not give us infinite notes because music is a relative system. Most of us do not perceive pitch as an absolute. The way we understand music is by the relationships between the notes. There's also nothing inherently part of A440 which suggests that we are limited to 12 notes. That is a fundamental misunderstanding of what A440 means. You can give yourself I don't know, 16 notes to the octave and still be anchored at A440. When I write in my personal favorite 31, I'm usually anchored at A440. Heck, I made a video where I divided that octave into a thousand discreetly different pitches and then made a chord with it. Guess what? I was still in A440. It's not the pitch anchor of your tuning that matters if you're trying to find new colors that go beyond Western harmony. It's the octave divisions. Again, I think Golden Hour is phenomenal. Jake is clearly a great musician. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if he knew all of this. And to be honest, you'd probably be the biggest buzzkill if you went onto a podcast or an interview or whatever that thing was and just went off on tuning theory for two minutes. Uh, Cause like who wants to, I just realized that I am doing that. 